Yeah, so I think it is the basic and the monitoring system anybody in the intensive care and should have so and, and they should know in detail about it and uh, it's not only the uh, gadgets and what they use it for the like monitoring it's like more of uh, the clinical examination and the, even the like, background history of the patient also like matters to give the support and the respiratory support exactly in the intensive care unit and the patient so I think it is the bread and the butter for everybody who works in ICU. Uh, we shall start with the session, doctor. Will that be okay? Yeah. So, how many students are there? To participate? Uh, we already have 26. There are yeah, more joke okay. Sure. So, okay, I think fine. we can start, and people will be still joining us for the next 15 minutes. So, so one minute to wait. Uh, no, doctor. Let's start with the session. Thank okay, you. So fine. Yeah, thank you. So I think, so my introduction is already being done. So just see the participants, I think, yeah. I, think I know a few of them in this, okay, good. So if at all, if you have any doubts, like please put your the query in the chat box. Uh, uh, doctor, would you like to take the question at the end of the session or in between the session? Mm -hmm. Uh, end of the session will be better and okay. if at all if they feel and they can actually put it in the like on the chat box as well yeah so uh, we'll be taking the uh, if you have any doubts or you want to ask anything particular from dr manjunath please write it on the chat box we'll be taking question at the end of the session or in between also if we can take the question which is relevant to the presentation thank you so much thank you so yeah so Contents of my talk. So the main thing is on the assessing the on the respiratory system and like monitoring all the symptoms of the oh, and the respiratory symptoms, especially the patients who require and ICU care, the clinical examination. So which we should not actually forget. So it's what I feel and now the newer generation the most of the time. So they don't touch the patients. It's all like more of a looking at the images, looking at the monitor and writing the plan of actions, but we should not actually forget the clinical examination, especially the bedside. The doctor touch like should be there for all the patients and the bedside like monitoring and variables, we all know the saturation of SpO2 and the entire LCO2 and also in the respiratory. I'll keep my talk as simple as possible so that when you should understand like basics and then we can and take on any other on the variables, if at all, if you have in mind, and you can ask me, and the NIV and the invasive ventilator and the monitoring. So my talk starts with like monitoring and the supports, but I'll go and hand on hand about the NIV and the invasive and the ventilator and the monitoring and also and the support as well, and the ultrasound chest, which is like most important for all the patients in ICU, and the radiological assessment for all the intensive care unit and the patients and the respiratory support, especially about oxygen delivery devices. So with this, I think uh, I'll always start my talk with, uh, so and the eye sees only what the mind is like prepared to comprehend until and unless if you know like what exactly and you, you're dealing with the patient, not then you can actually tell, okay, so, I'm actually going to examine this system like mainly. If at all if the patient has come with and the respiratory and the shortness of breath, so we would like to see in detail about the respiratory system and, and the cardiovascular. So, and you should know and what exactly and you're doing it. So, so and then coming with this and the assessment. So and the inspection of the patient, a patient in ICU, they can be awake or they can be sedated on the ventilatory support. So please inspect each and everything from the airway till the, and the head to toe examination, basically. And the respiratory rate, like breathing pattern, a visit and the thoraco abdominal or abdominal thoracic, and uh, whether it's a, and the rapid and shallow breathing or normal breathing and anatomic and the signs, please see for any deformities of the chest wall uh, and the spine and also any other abnormalities like a goiter, the tracheostomy scars, and the tracheal, the deviation. All these anatomic signs actually like make us know if at all if you have to intubate a patient. So if at all if you have done this inspection like well, and you can actually like plan your and the procedures like well. So anatomic signs are like most important to look for any tracheostomy scars, any tracheal deviation, or any other injuries on the chest or on the 
in the neck if at all if you have received any liver trauma patient and you have to see each and everything and the functional elements especially inspiration and expression diaphragmatic versus in the thoracic uh, if you receive in the trauma patient paradoxical in the chest wall motion or a post op patient with a cabg who has undergone just under 2 hours back uh, uh, and if uh, we had any uh, collection inside the chest in the paradoxical and the chest wall and the motion abnormalities can be seen in them and use of accessory muscles and the central and the peripheral like a you see it should come from the head to toe so once you have done all the inspection and you should see the type of the breathing and the central and the peripheral sinuses like a central sinuses you will see at the tongue and the peripheral at the extremities of the hand and also the feet and the pallor and the wheezing and the strider strider actually tells us about the airway edema if at all if you have seen a patient with like burns if the patient is in under strider so because of the airway burns so uh, and you can plan for intubation there is anticipation of the difficult airway and the cough and the sputum so a patient with a community acquired pneumonia or any and the fluid overload of with uh, pneumonia <clears throat> so we can ask about and the sputum Uh, the color, the quantity. So, see, and the assessment actually uh, starts with history taking, and also simultaneously it should go on one dysphonia, splinting, and the clubbed fingers, clubbing. So, especially the patient with any and the long-standing and the smokers or underlying any other and the hidden and the malignancies and the neck wind or distension, and the raised JVP. See, because of all these gadgets in the ICU. nowadays and we feel that and we don't do the examination at all but we should not actually forget our examination part and the trauma patients especially and the flyel chest and uh, if at all if you're doing any and the ultrasound scan and the e fast or see for the pericardial and the tamponade hemothorax like pneumothorax and do the and the auscultatory examination the pulmonary contusions the tension pneumothorax that so the signs and the symptoms of the impending respiratory failure so when we get a patient so we most of the time either they'll be intubated or they'll be on the face mask or niv supports they might be in a state of impending respiratory failure so they can have the dyspnea and the tachypnea what i use in my and the practices most of the time and inability to speak in the like full sentences and you can just you no know, talk to them and you can ask them and from where they are what they do their occupation and, and what problem they had if at all if they're not able to speak in the like full sentences you no know, that exactly shows that the patients and the vital capacity is actually reduced so inability to speak in the full sentences and the shallow breathing flared nostrils or the pursed lips and the chest the retractions all this but with all this uh, if at all if i don't see all this somebody who is with on the silent chest they can have in the cyanosis and the restlessness because of the hypoxemia so because of the hypoxemia in the blood so which actually decreases the cerebral oxygen uh, concentration as well so because of this uh, the altered mental status or the deteriorating in the mental status and altered hemodynamics as well the patient can be in a shock that so see this assessment and the starts with the history and goes with inspection auscultation and all that so if at all if you have received any patient with a underlying and the lung disorders like copd asthma obstructive sleep apnea or interstitial and the lung disease apart from the examination so you might have to ask for how many types how many times the patient had eye exacerbation in the last like few years and the history of hospitalization in the past and the history of and the need of the ventilatory support in the past all these are the most important though this does not contribute for that the present illness but we can actually prognosticate the patient about how long he is going to stay in the icu or in the hospital the patients with the repeated hospitalizations yeah they might have acquired uh, the infections and the amount of the treatment in in the sense and the antibiotics and the what you be for all if there is history of the repeated hospitalization so you might have to start with the carbapenems and all that and if for all if the if that required the ventilatory support in the past you might have to anticipate the like same and you might have to see for the on uh, niv support for the first and the 2 to 4 hours if for all if they don't tolerate uh, and they might need the ventilatory support and the patients with interstitial and the 
the lung disease the mainly the quality of life you know whether they are like a bedridden or like moving around inside the house or house arrest or how many hours of and oxygen support at home or how many the years of the illness is it is it and the progressive or it is and the static all these things are important for us to look like, uh, do the plan of action and also in the monitoring and to give the respiratory support 